Hello everybody, I hope you're having a good day today. Um, today is a little bit cloudy today here in Thailand. Um, it has been raining yesterday all day long. Um, and actually it was very nice and refreshing because before that we had days of 35 degrees Celsius. So uh, now we're having some uh, cooling down time. Um, today's topic is going to be uh, phases of wound healing. And uh, with this knowledge, we can um, learn to better understand why triggers do delay the healing rate of topical steroid withdrawal. Um, important of this channel is, is that all these videos are connected. So watching all of them gives you the best understanding and insight um, on topical steroid withdrawal and your healing journey. So the first video I posted was on phases of topical steroid withdrawal. And um, it can help you to better understand what to expect and also in which phase you are at uh, right now. Uh, important in this video is that um, when you pass phase number two and your, your skin already starts looking normal, it has reached only about 70% thickness of the skin. So the skin is still very fragile and sensitive and it's very easy to flare up. And these flares are caused by triggers. So it's not that TSW is completely unpredictable. It's just that your skin hasn't reached its normal 100% thickness yet. And that's why it's very sensitive and you flare up very easily. Um, and the second video is about triggers that cause delay in the healing rate of topical steroid withdrawal. Now I have discussed three categories of triggers. And all over these are quite easy to understand. Um, the most problematic often is the category of irritants. And this is because they are things that we never reacted to before, so it's just not in our mindset. Um, while irritants can play a very big and important role uh, in the healing of topical steroid withdrawal, if people are um, exposed to triggers like irritants and allergens on a day-to-day -day basis, for example, in a place where they live or where they work or they spend many hours, then the skin cannot heal well. It's every time triggered again, and the healing rate is then very, very slowly, or in some um, occasions, it doesn't heal at all. So that's very important to learn. Um, so that said, today's topic is uh, the phases of wound healing, and um, it will show you why uh, the triggers cause a delay in the healing, and we also had looked at some other things, what we can learn from this information. So let's have a look. Um, phase number one is called hemostasis. And um, this is where all the priority and energy of the skin and the body is going towards uh, closing the wounds. So when you have a cut or um, a scratch, or when scratching in TSW, you have multiple small little wounds then the skin first has to prioritize in closing the skin because open skin is a threat to the body. Pathogens can come in and this can be a, a cause really big problems. So once the skin is, um, is closed and you can see that it's, um, first the skin makes a thin film layer and then it starts making a crust. Um, after this has happened, it can go to phase number two, which is the inflammation phase. And in this phase, it's the main priority and the main energy of the body, the immune system. It goes to fighting off pathogens. Bacteria are super, super small. And even when we scratch, they get into the skin and the skin has to fight them off. So what you can notice is that the skin gets very bright red. Um, also, there can be pain and heat and swelling involved. So once all the pathogens are killed, then the skin can go on to the proliferation phase. And in this phase, um, the skin can start closing up the wounds from the inside out. It pushes up new skin cells um, to heal. And you can see this on your skin because it will be flaking, uh, very itchy, and the bright red color becomes a darker red color. So on a normal healthy skin, you will see this around a crust that it starts flaking and you start being itching, itchy. Uh, on TSW, you start flaking all over <laughs> and being itchy all over. And the, the fourth phase is the phase of the remodeling. 
So in this phase, the energy of the skin goes towards um, bringing the skin back to a normal skin texture and a normal color, so a normal elasticity and um, the original color of your skin. Um, so you can notice this, that the skin feels a bit tight. You can see the stretch lines on your skin. Um, it's even more uh, itchy and slowly the color of the skin starts going back to normal. Um, now on TSW skin it looks a bit like this. This is my inner elbow and here you can see these long stretch lines. And that's from remodeling. Um, so, yeah, what can we, what can we learn from this information? Now, first of all, you can understand, uh, why it triggers cause a delay, uh, in healing rate of topical steroid withdrawal. Because if the skin has to put its attention to closing little wounds and then fighting a pathogen, it cannot work on proliferation and remodeling. So every time we are in phase number one and phase number two of wound healing, you have a little bit delay because um, the healing part of the healing phases are the proliferation phase and the remodeling phase. Um, the cell proliferation is super important in healing uh, TSW uh, because one of the actions in topical steroid creams is that it lowers um, the skin proliferation rate. So it doesn't make new skin cells uh, as fast as it normal would be. It's suppressed, and because of this suppression, you don't see flaking on the skin, and this is why this action is in those creams. But after prolonged use of the creams, your skin proliferation rate is still very low, and this is also why topical steroid withdrawal takes so long in, in getting this, the skin back to normal thickness. Uh, now, don't worry if you flare from time to time. It's normal, and it's part of the process. And flares we cannot avoid. So, for example, the menses for the ladies or change of the season, um, and um, they will pass, um, but some triggers we can avoid and it's important to avoid them, especially if they are in your house or your living space. Um, so in the video triggers that delay the healing, you can see many examples and it's important that we learn what our triggers are so that we can avoid them and then have the most optimum healing rate. Um, what is a problem though, if the skin is constantly in phase number one and two from the wound healing phases. So if there is a vicious cycle going on and we can look uh, here, how this mechanism works. Um, so for example, when you scratch too hard and too deep, um, the skin has to put all its energy in closing the wound, then it has to uh, put this energy in fighting of the pathogens, and if you by that time scratch it again too hard and too deep, then you are in this vicious cycle. So in that case, the skin cannot heal because it never goes to the proliferation phase and the remodeling phase. So I had this going on my left shoulder. Um, here you can see the photo. It looks really raw and open, and I would scratch this every night and often multiple times a night. And I could see that this part of my body, body was not healing. Um, it was already six months or so exactly in the same state and it didn't get better. So when I came to Thailand, um, already by the cap treatment, uh, I got some improvement, but I also really had to stop the scratch cycle. It was very difficult to do and it cost me um, a lot of willpower and doing relaxations uh, exercises and breath exercises in the nighttime and not even prioritizing sleep but prioritizing staying really calm and not scratching. Uh, I managed to do it um, and uh, my shoulder was healed within two weeks. Um, I still have some other little patches on my body that have this scratch cycle going on but um, yeah I know the mechanism now I understand it I can observe it I know what they are where they are and I can make, um, yeah, spot by spot, uh, make it into a no scratch zone. And this how it, is how it can heal. Now this vicious cycle can also happen when you have prolonged exposure to irritants. And with irritants, there's also histamine release in the skin. So there's more itchiness and so there's more scratching. And then you can also have this vicious cycle going on. So here on this picture, you can see what this looks like. 
So there is exposure to irritants and allergens. Then there's inflammation in the skin, also the release of histamine, so more scratching. Your body has to put all its energy in closing the wounds and fighting off the pathogens. And by that time, it's exposed again to irritants and allergens, and you're in this vicious cycle. So some people live with, uh, with irritants in their house when they start topical steroid withdrawal. And this is a real issue. And I also know some examples of cases of people who couldn't get away from the irritant. For example, um, their whole house was, um, was with carpet on the floor and uh, carpet with a lot of dust in it. So they kept flaring up and they couldn't remove all the carpet in the house. So they really had to move to friends or families for a while so that the skin could calm down and then heal. Or sometimes it's in people surrounding. Um, so somebody had a construction site nearby uh, with chemicals in the air and uh, couldn't get away from the triers. So also this person had to go to friends or family temporarily for the skin to calm down and heal. So the second thing we can learn from this information of phases of wound healing is that we can learn to observe our skin very well uh, and take action if needed. Um, so if you are a good observer of your skin, you can really look at it day to day and get to know your skin and um, how your spots react. Uh, from a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, if you have a flare-up very fast, uh, you can take action very fast. So if you, for example, have a flare-up, um, you visit a friend's place or you visit a restaurant, um, also being there or maybe when you come back, you see that you have a flare. Um, the first thing you want to do is go to the bathroom and rinse it off with cold water. So the particles of the irritants that landed on your skin uh, are still on there. So if you rinse it off with water, your skin will calm down much, much faster. Now there's also a period uh, during your uh, withdrawal that you read all over. So because of the vasodilation and the skin is very thin and it gets irritated all the time anyway, you can't see very well what's happening, especially in the first uh, health phase. When you get worse and worse, you can't really see it. So because you can't observe your skin then, what's happening is just common sense to make your house as irritant free as possible. So no air refresheners and no perfumes and no renovation going on, no glue in the air, the, no smell paint in the air, uh, keeping your house as dust free as possible. Um, so if you have, if you have a carpet, uh, don't vacuum clean yourself because the vacuum cleaner puts a lot of dust in the air. So somebody else has to do it for you. And then you can go back in the room when the dust has landed. Uh, preferably there's no carpet in the room where you stay and you clean the floor with a uh, wet cloth. Um, now, of course, there's also irritants that come from the inside out. So for example, um, stress and not enough sleep, um, and such things. In that case, the rinsing off with water doesn't help. Um, but it is still helpful to know what, where the flare came from. Like if you know it was your menses or the change of the season, at least it can give you a peace of mind to know what, what is going on. And you can be more calm in knowing and understanding what, what is happening to your skin. And also knowing that it will get better again um, after weeks, sometimes after months in case of a seasonal flare, but it will get better again. And finally, uh, I would like to mention some complications that can happen during topical steroid withdrawal. Uh, I will point them out very briefly because I will discuss them in separate videos as well. Um, so first of all, if the skin is not able to close the wound or is not able to fight the pathogens, so the bacterial overload is then too high and basically the skin, the immune system doesn't win the war. That's when we say there is an infection going on. Now you can have a viral infection, you can have bacterial infection, fungal infection, and you can also have parasites in the skin. It's quite a big topic and sometimes also very underestimated in TSW. Um, so I will discuss this in a separate video. It's actually very, very, very common that you have infections and oftentimes people experience multiple infections for a while. So another complication that can happen uh, during topical steroid withdrawal is hardened skin uh, or elephant skin. And both look different and are different mechanisms. Actually, it's a different mechanism from the wound healing uh, phases and the wound healing process. But I wanted to mention it here shortly anyway, uh, because it's an important topic as well. Um, so in some cases, 
hardened skin can occur or elephant skin can occur and become chronic. So elephant skin is quite normal during your uh, healing process of TSW, but it should be short and should heal by itself. But in some cases it becomes chronic. Uh, even when the TSW is already gone, uh, people still suffer from hardened skin or elephant skin. Now these both are uh, caused by protection me mechanism of the body and um, they can be caused by uh, prolonged and excess excessive scratching, prolonged exposure to irritants in combination with ex excessive scratching, and also by using moisturizers on unbroken um, or cracked skin. Um, so moisturizers are not a problem for the light cases of TSW, but if you are middle case or severe case, then moisturizing can cause uh, excessive skin. Uh, the mechanism, how this works, I was saying in a different video. I hope this information is helpful for you, and I hope you it helps you to have the best healing rate that is possible. So if you can, and if you're willing, please support this channel. I'm working really, really hard on this project <laughs> um, to learn from Jay, to understand everything deeply, to make material for the videos. I'm active on different social uh, media networks. I get a lot of questions from people, so I'm answering questions, usually one, two hours a day, and I work for four or five hours a day on this whole project. Um, but I also have normal life going on, so I have to pay bills and um, buy food and have a place to sleep. So I could really, really use the support to keep me going. Um, and if you can and willing, everything is welcome. If it's a small donation, bigger donation. There is a link to PayPal and why fund me in the description of this video and the description of this channel. And if you can, then thank you from the bottom of my heart. I also want to thank Jay very, very much that he's willing to share his knowledge and experience uh, from over, which he gathered over the last 15 years of treating uh, TSW patients. And uh, oh. yeah, I am, and I think we as the whole community are very happy and grateful that he, he wants to share this with us. Okay, <laughs> and if you uh, like this information, then please like and share and subscribe. It helps other people to find this information much more easily. Um, so I wish you have a very, very good day, that you have a good healing rate, and uh, see you again next time. Bye-bye.